Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Bonnie, the community spiritual leader here at the Center in the Heart of Las Cruces. And I would like to welcome you to this space and time where our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. I also want to say happy birthday to our founder, Ernest Holmes. His birthday was Thursday, January 21st. He would have been 135 years old. I'm so grateful for him and for this teaching that still works and moves in and through our lives today. As you can see, since you are now watching us on YouTube, we have decided to take a few weeks off from gathering in person. We will be on YouTube this Sunday and next Sunday and possibly a few beyond that, so please look at the website, check the newsletter to keep up to date as to what we're doing and how we're meeting. I wanna welcome anyone who's watching us for the first time and please know that if you have any questions about anything that you have seen or heard on our videotapes, feel free to call and I would be happy to call you back and talk to you about what it is that we're teaching here. Our new member orientation was supposed to be this Sunday, the 23rd, and we will be doing that over the phone. So if anyone is interested in joining, please call me and I would be happy to go through that orientation with you over the phone. I also have a very exciting announcement to make. Our very own Teresa Valenzuela has been elected by the Centers for Spiritual Living, our larger organization, to be on the Practitioner Council. We're so grateful to have her be a representative to our larger organization. And now please welcome our Practitioner in Service. Good morning, my name is Bob Greer. I'm your Practitioner in Service today. I'm also your board president. Um, we believe in the power of prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. If you uh, would like to fill out a prayer request, they're located in the back of the chairs, which today you're not here, so the best thing to do is to go online. We have a prayer request form online. Know that those are confidential. They only go to one practitioner, and they're only shared with the prayer team, which is uh, made up of the New Thought communities here in uh, Las Cruces. We meet on Tuesdays every week to pray with you for anything that you need. Uh, also, we also appreciate hearing uh, stories of gratitude for anything that has happened uh, as a result of the prayer request you sent in or anything that you would like to share with in your life. Um, so please take advantage of that. And uh, with that, it's time for song, silence, and prayer. In this moment, I am grace. Grace is this moment.
So just opening to that power and presence that is right here, right now, that one loving spirit that is in and through all things, knowing that there is nowhere where this power is not, that it is imbued and is in and through each and every person on this planet. And I know that I am connected to that source at all time, that I am a unique expression of that source, just as each and every person is. And so I'm so grateful for this opportunity today to be able to share these truths, to hear these talks, and to just celebrate our divinity and our unity with a heart overflowing with gratitude. I simply say, and so it is. All right, for today's reading, I have a little uh, poem of sorts, I believe it's called, and uh, it says, the world, out, the world outside, she's calling on you. Crack the door and leave your home. Become the explorer you were meant to be and voyage all over the wilds that was once your neighborhood. For there you will find treasure hidden under your feet and with the flicker of your imagination can be anything. Spotted feathers and fuzzy leaves become the map of a whole universe. Flower burst and electric bark arrange in a symphony on the ground. Life becomes so alive again, and so do you. So take the hand of an adult, of that adult of yours, lead them back out, out of their figure outy minds, out of their never ending scrolling screens, out of their worries and woes and long lists of to do's, and into belonging to this timeless story, to this changing world, to their deep and nourishing creative well that, it, that they always have been a part of and had access to. The greater story is called by many names. It can be experienced as wonder, delight, or even just happiness. Thank you. Try my best to focus in a loving, mindful way. One task at hand, one thought to follow through. In this space of singularity, there's nothing much to say until my heart starts to align with you. Then there must be a million reasons why My spirits turn and cartwheels cross the sky These quiet moments here with you When all your light comes shining through Are everything it means to be Try to find my heart through each and every day To find the sweet compassion I possess My mind, it wants to interfere My thoughts lead me astray As I struggle to maintain my tenderness Then I recall a million reasons why my spirits turn and cartwheels cross the sky these quiet moments here with you when I come home to find my truth for everything it means to be alive a certain grace to find this loving way one task at hand one thought to follow through 
In this gentle space There's nothing much to say At least until my heart opens to you Then there must be a million reasons why My spirits turn and cartwheels cross the sky This quiet moment here with you When all your light comes shining through Is everything it means to be alive This morning, we will be hearing from Lillianne Pilot, one of our practitioners, who has spent much of her life as a spiritual seeker. She is trained in the use of sound and music and healing. She has led chanting and mantra groups, facilitated workshops in sound healing, and has used sound to assist souls both entering and exiting this plane. Lily volunteered for three years with an interactive art program for patients confined to hospital. She also has a degree in arts administration. From 2005 to 2013, she was a member of the music ministry at the Center for Spiritual Living Edmonton, Canada, and earned her Science of Mind Practitioner's License in 2012. A true creative, she enjoys painting, sculpture, creating food, photography, writing, and music. As a singer-songwriter, she performed actively for over 20 years and has four recordings to her credit, and she is a two-time finalist for the M. Power Positive Music Awards. She is now running a nature retreat with her husband, Doug, and has opened a small art gallery at the domes at that nature retreat and is happily nestled in the loving arms of the Center for Spiritual Living here in Las Cruces. We are so grateful for her service and for her words today. Please welcome Lillianne Pilot. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lillianne Pilot, and as always, it's my very great pleasure to be here with you today. And I use the term with you loosely, of course, because we're all sitting in our own offices or living rooms or comfy spots and curled up with our computers and still enjoying our Sunday service and appreciating that time together. So good morning, everybody. Today's talk is called Move Like Silk. And I've been trying to figure out a graceful way of doing this, but I just wanted to show this beautiful, brightly colored silk that Reverend Bonnie very kindly brought as an illustration for me. And I keep getting this image in my mind of this, well, this silk, actually. She brought exactly the right one. And just imagine it in a gentle breeze fluttering in the summer sun, and it's, it's just so organic. I want to move like this silk in that sunlit breeze. We're godlings, and I think we fight that a little bit. The idea, the responsibility of living our fullest potential. And I think it kind of gets balled up with this idea of success. And there's a quote I love, your life is only successful when the world is blessed by your presence and the universe is graced by it. Sometimes we humans tend to focus on appearance. We favor the frivolous, numbing our senses until we're too dulled to really, truly realize what a wonder it is that we're here. There's um, a book Reverend Bonnie lent me. She's in, she's in the Linden mode. That's what's going on here. Um, it's a wonderful book. It's called Morning Altars and it's by Day Schildkret. And 
I'm going to pull very liberally from this book. Um, he recalls, early in the story, being in a teepee in Ontario, Canada, on a starlit night with a group of other people doing some personal work. And all of a sudden, the owner of the land and the teepee said, wonder takes a willingness to be uncertain. Think about that. Perhaps wondering about mysterious things is easier when you're on a farm in a teepee on a vast and starlit night, but the real practice is to take that wondering home and be willing to marvel at the moments in our everyday lives. Rabbi uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel calls this radical amazement. He says, for instance, the miracle of simply waking up in the morning really deserves a lot more interest than we give it. What if we simply refuse to take daily life for granted and instead invite ourselves to experience every moment in awe? The rabbi goes on to say the saboteur that will attempt to prevent you from discovering the natural hidden treasures right in front of you is your certainty, your sense that you already know how things are. Certainty is that defended mindset that has convinced you that there's nothing more to be learned because you've got it figured out already. Certainty is the anesthetic of wonder. The only way to break through that well-fortified wall is to be willing to be uncertain and look again. There's a wonderful passage in a book called The Afterlife of Billy Fingers, and it talks about grace. The character, Billy, is, is deceased, and he's talking to his sister from the afterlife. And he says, people don't usually experience grace unless it hits them over the head with some big miracle. They aren't in tune with the constant little miracles weaving in and out of their lives every day. Miracles like breathing and seeing, hearing, walking, talking, and thinking, and being able to feel. That's why so many spiritual paths promote the concept of gratitude. It helps you notice the grace in your life. Grace is the feeling of connection with the infinite. And awe is the rapture inspired by it. Awe and wonder enliven my senses. If I'm not dialed in, I'm not engaged. I'm not connected with that divine grace. I'm not living the fullest expression of my godling nature. It's the difference between eating a perfectly ripe pear so fast you don't even remember eating it and holding it in front of you and appreciating the beautiful shape and the delicate coloring of it and your mouth watering like mine is right now with the, that incredible aromatic perfumey smell that a pear has and the as you eat it, that sweet juice just trickling down the back of your throat. And oh my God, presents and pears make a great pear. Here's a tricky part, though. Pain and grief also use those same senses because it, it all comes with the spacesuit. But instead of being enlivened, like we are when we're eating the pear, we're triggered. It's harder to live in awe when we're engaged with the hard stuff, our own or that of others. I know many of us are very compassionate and we feel deeply the, the, the pain and tribulations of our, of our friends and loved ones. Oscar Wilde said, there's something terribly morbid in the modern sympathy with pain. One should sympathize with the color, the beauty, the joy of life. The less said about life soars, the better. And this is essentially affirmative prayer. A practitioner consciously identifies the apparent obstruction and obliterates it by recognizing only the perfect divine state. But 
And this is a big but, the kind of big but we like. The person for whom we are treating must be receptive. A practitioner will help you sweep away the chaff, but then you have to do your own work and keep your focus on the truth. There's a story that uh, concert pianist Kenneth Mills told in his autobiography about a time he crushed his hand in his overhead garage door badly enough that he thought he might not play piano again. He was put in touch with a Christian scientist at that time who bound his hand, told him to see it as healed, to not talk about it, think about it, or look at it. He did as he was told. And three weeks later, when the bandage actually finally fell off, his hand was immaculate. He said it looked like he just had a manicure. As Holmes says, you must be willing to give up anything and everything that would hinder the demonstration. Perfect belief is the beginning and the end of all good mental work. And this is how we need to navigate our journey through this world, to put pain down and allow grace to fill us with awe. My favorite Persian poet Hafiz wrote, I wish I could show you when you're lonely or in darkness the astonishing light of your own being. We need to practice remembering that we're light beings. Prayer is essential. Holmes tells us there's a vitality in our communion with the infinite. Just as fire warms the body and food strengthens us and sunshine raises our spirits, there's a transfusion of some invisible force in our communion weaving itself into the fabric of our mentality and this conscious commingling of our thought with spirit this conscious commingling of our thought with spirit is essential to our well-being. I was recently chatting with my sister and she commented on the COVID situation saying that even after 40 years of practicing, focusing on the real and not the appearance, she had to remind herself not to get caught up in what we see and what we hear. She said, you can't get all the information from the appearance, so you may as well go for the absolute, which defies the appearance. So focus on what brings you peace and joy. Error, another saboteur, will try to creep in. It just does. But the more we practice reverting our attention to the absolute, the more we will find awe as our companion. I chose the song you heard um, uh, before this talk because I was in awe of the inspired talent of that young man. I've never seen anything like it. So engage yourself with things that move you, music that lifts you up, going for a walk in the sunshine, the astonishing blue of the sky, the rise of the mountains, whatever it is that does it for you, go and do that thing. I, I always love when I'm out for a walk uh, up in the mountains, I love to listen to the ravens. They fly over and they make these incredible sounds. Or, you know, all the different noises that they make. They sound like they're about to talk. And I, I like to listen really carefully because I think maybe they know something I don't. For example, they know how to fly. But we get to move like silk in a sunlit breeze. It's all about buoyancy. So this drama thing, there's a lot of it going on. I have a lot of friends and family who are going through many, many hard things right now. It's very, it's very important to help hold space for them. But that drama has a certain allure, whether we're being drawn into our own story or the vivid details of somebody's, someone else's. And I want to make a note here. Don't listen to the vivid details. Lots of people want to tell you exactly what happened and then the surgeon, you know. Just don't. Just say, I'm sorry, I can't hear that. Um, I'm feeling very sensitive and I love you and I'm just going to hold space for you. You can't go down that rabbit hole. 
If we're not holding our attention in the absolute, we stop noticing the vital essence of life, the connections, the synchronicities, the opportunities to reach out to others in meaningful ways. And we lift ourselves up in the process. There's no private good. You know, recently I've, I've had some amazing interactions with people. I've met some new people um, that, man, we just instant deep friendship. And others I've known for years somehow were magically more connected. And it's left me feeling incredibly inspired. I was able to reach out with what they needed. They came at a time when I was feeling, frankly, isolated. And suddenly, the sky is brighter, and the, and the sun is brighter, and the sky is bluer. Everything's brighter and bluer. <laughs> I'm just energized, and I feel connected again. And I'm finding that my senses are on a rather joyful alert. I'm just picking up amazing moments, one after the other. Even driving here today, the, the, um, we had snow in the mountains and the sun was making all kinds of little sparkles. And I, I pulled over and I stopped to have a look and I could see that the uh, snow crystals were actually like little sheets of glass on a little angle uh, and picked up the light in a way I've never even seen before. It was quite remarkable. Holmes says that the real enjoyment of life comes when we see that everything is animated by spirit. The essence of the real is invisible, but the substance of the invisible is part of everyday life, and we experience it through our senses. Living in awe means making the choice to focus on this truth. Let our hands be so busy catching blessings, but there's no room for doubt. Move like silk in a sunlit breeze. In the words of 14th century philosopher Meister Eckert, let God be God in you. So one of the tools that we have to process and shape our experiences words. And it's important to be specific, and I know I've talked about this before, words have meaning, words have power. That's why we do affirmative prayer. The vibration of every syllable uttered is encoded with instructions that sound a like vibration in the universe. But there's an interesting thing that I noticed recently. When I'm praying or trying to set an intention, I do it out loud. And then I hear where my language isn't exactly what I mean. So I try to get more specific. And then the more I try to refine it, the less clear I am about what it is I wanted in the first place. And if I follow that thread even further, I often discover the thing I thought I was seeking isn't important anymore. But what has happened in the process is a shift in the heart. And I'm suddenly paying attention in a whole new way. So what is important? I think love and compassion, living in harmony with ourselves, with others, and with nature in this Garden of Eden. And pretty much everything else is incidental. So again, in this book, uh, Morning Altars by Day Schildkret, um, it's really a beautiful photo essay of mandalas that he's made out in nature. But what really inspired me was the intention that, and the attention that created them. And so this was quite a journey to presence. He'd gone through a painful uh, breakup and he was walking through the hills of Wildcat Canyon in California, I think, with his dog Rudy and he began to play with nature. And I was immediately drawn into a memory um, being five or six years old, walking in the rolling fields and forests where I grew up with my dog, Rudy. Um, I'd wander for hours on end, absolutely happy as a clam. And years later, I returned to those fields. I remember my mother saying, don't go there. You just, you really can't go home. It's not the same. And I went, and it was amazing. Sorry, Mom, but... And I wrote this, an old wood gate 
lies rotting in a field. It's a portal to another time. The keepers of the gate are gone. One hop, and I've crossed the line. A magic place from years before expectantly awaits my heart, still beating under layers of life and memories grown far apart. Now, crescent moon, twilight chirping, chittering, chatting in the dusk, hillsides roll away towards night and tell their tales in scents of musk and apple blossoms in first bloom, new growth reaching for the sun, and still the memories flood in as if to tell me I'm the one, the ancient one for whom they've pined in quiet repose for all these years, their branches aging, curling down with dripping sap like sticky tears. Oh, be still. My heart turns to the land, deeply breathing new and old, and I hear the songs from all the years. The soil heard the stories told, children's laughter in the fields and dragonflies that gently sip the morning blossoms cradled dew, pristine in every curve and dip. Be still. My heart beats loudly here, imbued in every rock and tree, and rising up from earth to sky, a sense of whose I used to be. The moon is casting shadows now, and resignedly my feet turn home. And though my form may one day leave, my heart stays in these fields to roam. And I wanted to share that with you because it was such a precious moment of wonder in my life to feel everything I felt and see every tiny detail of the land I grew up on. It was awesome. Of course, this is exactly what Schildkret is doing, creating his mandalas. It's a practice that really, really speaks to me. I love to make art. I love to be out in nature, gathering treasures, creating a sacred space as though every single twig and berry and leaf is highly significant. Because seeing the significance of those little things feels important to me. So do what keeps you present. I have a friend who loves doing jigsaw puzzles. She can lose herself for hours. And other people I know color. They make mandalas. They hike. They do yoga. It's different for everybody. Don't worry about it. Choose what interests you and use that as your practice for presence. There's one thing, other thing I want to touch on. It's something I feel interferes with our ability to live in awe. It's a general lack of awareness between people in their environment. People leave a lot of messes for other people to deal with. And I raised this topic recently with a friend. She's a retired psychologist. And we came to the idea that some folks intrinsically don't feel valuable. And this leads to a sense of disconnect with the world around them. If you think you're not valuable, then what you do doesn't matter, right? Like throwing an imaginary stone into a pond. There's no ripple. Except there is a ripple. We are God expressing itself in form. Life is a very rare gift. The opportunity to be in a spacesuit called a body so that we can navigate this Garden of Eden and bring form to our dreams. If we feel small, it's hard to feel grace, to tap into that greater sense of awe. Someone else has something or they've done something or achieved something that we could never do. And we get so wrapped up in us and them that we lose touch with the astonishment we call life on this planet. Awe is a feeling of connection. Like when you gaze at the Milky Way in all its glory, heart wide open, or you find a hummingbird nest and discover that tiny eggs smaller than your baby fingernail have hatched. And there are these perfect tiny life forms, mouths wide open. I think if you were to ask anybody, regardless of their spiritual belief, what their innermost desires are, they would tell you they want to love and be loved. They want it, and they want to make a difference. They want to feel valued. If we believe we don't matter, then we build up our defenses. We're reactive and powerless. 
and we lose sight of the things that do matter. We can whitewash our experience till it all looks the same and numbs the pain of separation because that's what's at the root of it, isn't it? A sense of separation from God, isn't that what holds us feeling apart? Isn't that what stops us from feeling awe? Except none of that's real. The appearance of turmoil in the world around us is created by eyes that are closed, minds full of fear and doubt, and hearts yearning to be heard through their own barricades. We can't have it both ways. We can't walk around behaving as though we don't matter and therefore uh, our effect on the world doesn't matter and experience the joy and love and bliss that's all around us in this Garden of Eden, this Garden of Delight in which we are the seed and the soil, the water and the sun, the blossom and the fruit. In her talk a couple of weeks ago, Reverend Bonnie was researching the uh, definition of the word awe, and it was a bit confusing because, you know, the information she came up was everything from fear to wonder. And I thought, you know, it's a lot like trying to define God. Maybe this is where words fail us and the heart rules. These heart moments are so important. I stopped at a friend's place the other day, and just as I was headed towards her front door, I startled a whole group of deer feeding, and I just stopped, and I started to sing. I didn't even think about it, I just started to sing. And this, this doe and her baby not only stopped walking away, they actually started walking towards me. They got about 15 feet away, and their ears doing this, and just looking at me, I was absolutely filled to the brim. It was an incredible God moment. Oscar Wilde's quote that I read earlier speaks to something important. The very act of being alive means that we will experience challenge and loss. Everyone's born and everyone will cross the bridge and those left behind will grieve and everyone will experience pain and everyone will wake up each morning with the opportunity to choose what to focus on. This crazy place called Earth is really full of wonder and we just have to remember to pay attention to it. Just like the night sky, those moments of darkness that we experience are just a backdrop on which to hang all of the brilliant and beautiful stars. And when we pause and breathe and realize the enormity of the creation of the beauty in and around us, then we are living in awe. I want to be the vibrant silk whose every thread catches the light rippling in the breeze so that anyone who passes by can see me. I want to live as awe. Thank you. And so I invite you to stand with me. I invite you to stand and remember who and whose you are. I invite you to stand and know that you are standing with the one as the one. And in that place, you stand in awe. It is a gift and a wonder to be able to stand. And so I know that that very act of standing is the act of bringing myself up and lifting myself up into that perfect place of awareness and knowingness where I know that I am the thing itself. I am awe. I am living in awe. I am surrounded by awe. I'm grateful for awe. That wonder that enables us to step out of the bondage of self and into the world around us and have a real experience with everyone else who is standing in awe is the reality of my life. It is where I want to be. 
It is where I condition myself to be. It is where I practice being. And it is where I know I am. I release these words and I invite you to join me in saying, and so it is. Changing might be a welcome feeling I guess that only time will tell My spirit's wandering restless Toward that far horizon It's time to bid this place farewell This always happens to me It's not a foreign feeling You know that I've been here before Riding this roller coaster, it's never been that easy And I keep coming back for more It's been a good life, I really can't complain My heart's a bit more tender every day It's been a good life and I'd choose it all again I've had a good, good life Inside me, you know what I was feeling It's not a complicated thing My joy is transcendental My pain is monumental A Herculean reckoning I've traveled across the nation Seeking a sweet salvation Hoping to find a brand new day but I won't find it wandering, it's always been elusive But I'll keep searching anyway It's been a good life, I really can't complain My heart's a bit more tender every day It's been a good life and I'd choose it all again I've had a good, 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 good life Life surrounds us to lift and then confound us The path keeps twisting on and on But if we simply listen Our hearts are gonna lead us To a new phenomenon Oh yeah, my eyes are open My spirit's ever hoping That this illusion might be So filled up with laughter This love forever after Is such a gift for us to feel To feel It's been a good life I really can't complain My heart's a bit more tender every day It's been a good life And I'd choose it all again I've had a good, good We are so grateful. Thank you, Lillianne, for your words. Thank you for those wonderful videos that we've been able to see with inspiring music. And now is our opportunity to consider where it is that we give back to our larger community. And 10% of all that comes through the center to support the work that we are doing, 
this month is going to the Oak Street Veterans Apartments, which are a supportive community and resource bridge housing 22 formerly homeless veterans under the management of the Mesilla Valley Community of Hope. They have many needs as they are navigating their independent living at this complex and they strive to help them by supplying them with basic items such as a food pantry, clothing, blankets, sheets, towels, personal hygiene, and cleaning supplies. So 10% of all that you all give to us is going to help and support them. So thank you so much. Please think along with me, say this in your own heart, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, in me. And so it is. Please remember that our practitioners are available to pray with you. You can call them on the phone. Their phone numbers are listed on our website, or you can call the office and ask for someone to call you. Please know we support you all in prayer and we are so grateful for everyone who is participating this week virtually. Thank you for being a part of us. Thank you for your spirit and your life and your love. You are blessed. Stay safe. Love you all. <laughs>